All right, Rosie. There you go, my dear. All right, Play of City family, what is up? It is Art, Rose and Bobby coming at you, eating some delicious, very clean grapes. Um, and I have a bounty. I have a bounty of all things produce, vegetables, fruits from the grocery store, because I want to do a video all about how to buy almost every produce item at the grocery store, how to store them and how to wash them. That way you know safely how to clean them and extend their shelf life because I hate wasting money, Rose. And especially with fresh berries and stuff for the summer, that stuff goes bad so quickly. So Rose and I are going to break down all that stuff for you and wave hello, hello. Uh, before we do, this video is sponsored by one of the longest collaboration partners from the channel, Thrive Market. Everything you would normally get at the grocery store, like your favorite keto products, uh, non-GMO, organic, gluten-free, paleo, you can get on Thrive Market much cheaper than the grocery store. In fact, uh, most members save $32 per order and you don't have to go to the grocery store. The box comes to your house. Almost every order, I get the organic grass-fed Thrive Market ghee. This stuff is great. And my link down in the description box, it actually gets you a uh, free gift for first time members up to $22. One of the free gifts right now, you guys, is uh, Chomps grass fed beef sticks. Fantastic stuff. It's risk free. The membership pays for itself. I've been using them for years. Check them out. Okay, Roaster, let's start by giving you another grape. And we'll start with the summer vegetables that are in season right now. We're talking like peak summer vegetables and fruit like tomatoes. Get heirloom tomatoes if you can find them. Heirloom tomatoes are made with an heirloom or um, kind of ancient seed and the varietals usually will have crazy shape to them. You do want to buy organic because tomatoes are on the dirty dozen, but heirloom tastes great. The one thing I don't want you to do is store these in your fridge because they actually have flavor compounds in them that turn off when they go believe out. I think 42 degrees Fahrenheit. So no matter what, keep them room temperature. And uh, if you have to make a spot show out of them, stuff like that, just don't put them in the fridge. These are so darn tasty. Slice them up, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, salt, and some basil, you're good to go. Another summer staple that Rose has been seriously loving is peaches and nectarines. Once again, they're typically on the dirty dozen, so you wanna get organic. Store them like this. Um, upside down, so stem side down, let them ripen at room, temp room temperature, then move them to the uh, fridge. Uh, you don't want to put them in the fridge before they ripen, otherwise it could hinder the ripening process. More blueberries, my sweet. And then if you can't get through all your uh, peaches or nectarines, you can just slice them and freeze them and save them for uh, like peach crisp. We have a great peach crisp recipe coming in our five ingredient cookbook coming out on December 1st, which is the heart of the winter. So you could have summertime fresh peaches in your crisp in the middle of winter with our uh, recipe. Um, if you want to speed up the ripening process, Rose, put your peaches or nectarines in a uh, paper bag along with a banana. Why? Because bananas, Rose, uh, emit ethylene gas, and that'll speed up the maturation or the ripening process, which is grand if you don't want to wait. But to be honest, these ripen pretty quickly, so you don't have to worry about those too much. Now, Rose is crushing probably one of the cleanest grapes around. I found this great technique, and I want to give credit to the blogger I find that of, so I'll put the link down below. The best way to clean grapes is to do this. Take them home. Don't wash them until right before you want to eat them. Rinse them off with cold water. Put them in a bowl with two teaspoons of salt, two teaspoons of baking soda, and then shake, shake, shake it off, right? Taylor Swift style, rough it up. Give it like um, a salt scrub for your face. Like that would scrub away all the junk on there. That will scrub away all of the wax, any chemicals on there. And yes, you do want to get organic uh, grapes because they're always on the dirty dozen. Look at the comparison. The ones that are just rinsed with water still have the natural wax. It's 100% natural on the coating. The ones that I microderm abrasioned are clean as a whistle. Rose is loving them and I'm loving them too. So get those for sure. It's a great, great technique to keep them clean. But most all produce, don't wash it when you get home. Wash it right before use because that excess moisture can really build up and speed in the uh, rottening process and give more bacteria, more moisture to grow off of. Uh, summer corn right now. Tis summer corn season. And I really recommend buying organic. Hold on, this one has a little stem on here. 
or find a local farmer's market that might have non-GMO because a lot of small farms can't afford the organic certification process. It's a lot of red tape and um, it's expensive. So sometimes if you go to local farmer's markets like here in Chicago, they'll be like, hey, our corn is non-GMO and it might even be organic, but not certified organic. Um, so even though it's on the Clean 15, I would get it organic. Otherwise it's GMO and sprayed with uh, Roundup and glyphosate and all that stuff. The thing you wanna do to extend the shelf life when you get home is put it in uh, like a plastic bag from the grocery store, wrap it tight, but not airtight, and then put it into the fridge. Girls is loving these grapes. The thing about summertime corn is you want to eat it as quickly as possible, Rose, because as soon as you pick this, uh, the natural sugars in the corn kernels will convert to sugar to starch. So like literally as soon as possible is ideal. Anything over two to three days, it's going to be starchy as can be. So um, it's obviously not keto or paleo, but it's when peak freshness in the summer, you got to crush and now you know how to get it organic and how to store it in case you don't want to crush it immediately. Um, what else? I love mushrooms and I oftentimes rose by, what's going on? You didn't drop anything. Here you go. I oftentimes buy the mushrooms in the bulk section because they're cheaper. And now the bulk section is coming back because it was gone from Corona. Here's what you want to do. These are shiitake mushrooms. Put them in a vessel, cover it with plastic wrap and just poke some holes in there. So you have some ventilation. Actually, Art told me Elton Brown has another technique where if you have a small paper bag, not a monster paper bag like I have, you can just put them in the paper bag and close the top and it's breathable. It's all about adding some air to this, but not so much air or humidity from the refrigerator that it's going to get uh, too much moisture and wilt and get moldy. Um, you don't have to buy organic mushrooms. And if you want to rinse them off with water before you use them, it's 100% fine. A lot of people think mushrooms, Rose, are like sponges. They're not. They're not going to soak up all the water. Once again, Alton Brown did an experiment. Do you remember that art? And he washed them before and after, and they didn't even change their weight. So if you want to wash them and get the water off, go for it. You know, don't worry about it. We talked about my summer berry hack when it comes to blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, strawberries. If you want to extend the shelf life of these, this is one thing you want to wash when you get home immediately because there's a lot of microbes and bacteria on here and it decomposes the berries very quickly. So when you get home, put the berries in a bowl, fill it with water, add about a quarter cup of vinegar, any vinegar works, let it sit for three to four minutes for raspberries and blackberries, seven to 10 minutes for strawberries and blueberries, then rinse off everything, let it dry at room temperature, throw it in the fridge. That kills the bacteria and the microbes that live on the outside of the berries that are responsible for decomposing and making them go bad quickly. That's a great hack. I've been doing that for a long, long time. Uh, what else is summer peak right now? Obviously melons like honeydew melons, watermelons, sugar cube melons. I got this at a little place rose in Chicago called Local Foods. Smell that rose. It smells like sugar. Hence the, <laughs> it smells like sugar, hence the name sugar cube melon. Um, those are just easy. You know, you can buy conventional. You don't have to buy organic because they're protected by their skin. But um, whatever kind of voodoo or magic you do, if you slap them, if you juggle them, you do you, you it doesn't matter. Um, just when you get home, wait till they're really, really ripe and then store them in the fridge. And then I like to put some of this press and seal on here, which works great with avocados too. Shout out to Dirk and Appleton for uh, telling me the magic of press and seal. So very, very easy when it comes to summer melon. Speaking of avocados, I bought a couple. They're very, very underripe. Now there are some hacks online rows that say, hey, take an underripe watermelon, bake it at 200 degrees for about 25 minutes until it's soft and mushy. No way, Jose, homie, don't play that game. Technically, yes, it will make it soft and mushy, but the flavor profile, as Art likes to say, is not developed yet. You're not going to have that lovely, fruity, uh, fatty flavor and texture. So I wouldn't do that. If you want to speed up, once again, Rose, the ripening of the avocados. She's cracking me up. This is what she does. She loves her food. She'll hum. And we want to hear her humming all the time. You put your avocados in the bag with our friends, the bananas, and the ethylene gas from the bananas help ripen the avocados. Make sure you wash the avocados with water hot water, cold water, it doesn't matter. Um, don't use soap. There was a time I was using soap and Art's like, no, they don't recommend that. And you don't have to buy the produce washes either. Just a good scrub with water, maybe a good scrub with water and a sponge would do the trick even better for hard melons and hard skin fruits like the avocado. 
because um, you don't want a dirty uh, skin to get onto the knife and then go into the fruit. So that's what I would do for avocados. And then bananas actually release a lot of ethylene gas, which is why you don't want to store your fruit next to your vegetables. If I put bananas next to sweet potatoes, the ethylene gas would actually cause these to bud and sprout a lot quicker. So always keep them separated. Who sang that song? The offspring. The offspring, thank you. You gotta keep them separated. Um, if you wanna prevent the bundle from going too ripe too quick, separate them once again, offspring style, and then wrap each one in plastic wrap. The plastic wrap prevents the ethylene gas from making them ripen too soon. My favorite stuff like romaine, but really uh, kale. You wanna buy these lettuces organic. They're always on the Dirty Dozen roaster. And I love kale. And this kale is called black kale, Tuscan kale, lacinato kale, or dinosaur kale. Where did my knife go, Rose? Hold on a second. There we go. That's my favorite kind because the curly kale, I've talked about it a million times, is a little too tough for me. Now, if you want to extend the shelf life of these guys once you buy them, don't wash them until you're right, uh, before you're ready to use them. Wrap them in a damp paper towel and then cover them with the plastic bag you get at the grocery store. It holds enough moisture to the leaf to keep them, uh, excuse me, uh, keep them uh, firm and uh, crisp, but not too much moisture that they get wilty and damp. So very important for these guys. We're cruising here. And then Rose, if you buy clamshells of uh, lettuce, this is a great company uh, based out of Chicago called Gotham Greens. See this uh, layer of plastic, uh, paper towel here? Put a layer of paper towel right on the top and then store it upside down in your fridge. A fan told us about that, Rose, during a live stream one time. And uh, it wicks away the moisture from the lettuce and prevents the excess moisture, once again, from making things a little too, uh, a little too wet in there. Rose, you're out of control today, my dear. Okay, Rose, here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you this and I'm gonna hand you to mom. There you go, go to mama. Whoa, oh my God. Yeah, she wanted to be in the video. <laughs> she was making so much noise. I hope you guys weren't uh, a little uh, distracted by that. But great little hack here for uh, clamshell and prepared salad mixes like that. Apples, I would always buy organic. Uh, you want to keep these in the coldest part of your fridge. Interesting fact about apples is that think about when apple season is in September, October. These were probably picked back then, kept in really cold storage, and they're fresh year round. I think. Uh, Farmers back in the day, before refrigeration was around, would pick their apples in the harvest season, put them in barrels, and then sink those barrels to the bottom of the river where it was very, very cold. That's a great preservation technique for the apples, but you always want to get organic for that. I think they're also stored in a nitrogen environment. Oh, the nitrogen too? I think so. Yeah, actually a lot of produce sometimes will be obviously picked when it's very ripe, but then it goes to nitrogen or other gas chambers in local cities and then gassed to ripeness and then sent to the uh, to the produce uh, to the produce department in your grocery store. But I guess in that case, the nitrogen helps preserve them, too. Um, stuff like onions, garlic and pepper and uh, sweet potatoes. Keep those in cool, dark places away from any fruit. Great little uh, extension hack, time extension hack for asparagus. You don't have to buy organic. I still buy organic because Desi wants the organic stuff for Rose. And when you get home, cut about a half an inch off the base, then put it in a little vessel with some cold water, and then put the plastic bag back over the top. And then it's going to last you a good four, maybe five days in the fridge. You might want to switch out that water uh, after two days to keep it fresh. Uh, but that's great for extending the uh, shelf life of the asparagus, which can be pricey, except during the spring when it's really in season. Rose is agreeing. In here is my celery. Celery will really extend its life when you wrap it tightly in tin foil. If you did this with uh, plastic wrap, it traps too much of the moisture and doesn't allow the ethylene gas to release. So it decomposes quicker, which is why I recommend buying, uh, you don't have to buy organic, which is why I recommend that buying conventional and keeping them in tin foil. Uh, zucchini and uh, and a yellow squash, you don't have to buy organic. I just keep it in uh, the bag from the grocery store or a, a bag like this. And don't seal it all the way. It's good to have a little contact of the moisture to the skin, but you need the airflow in there. Broccoli, you don't have to buy organic because broccoli, uh, broccoli, cabbage, and cauliflower have natural compounds in them that prevent uh, bugs from eating them. So they're sprayed less. 
but just take a damp paper towel, put it over the broccoli crowns, and then put that back in the fridge. That Once again, that little bit of moisture without the suffocation will help extend the shelf life. Uh, peppers, I just toss into the uh, coldest part of the fridge, or you can put them in a Ziploc bag and I'll leave it halfway open for air circulation. Beets, I like to buy beets in the bunch because I can use these beet greens and saute them in uh, the Thrive Market ghee with a lot of olive oil or some uh, garlic and red pepper flakes. And then as soon as you get home, you want to take them off. And you could actually keep these in a uh, zip top bag closed. They don't mind the, the lack of airflow. Uh, what else here? Carrots. I just keep these in the coldest part of my fridge. There's nothing uh, fancy about that. Oh, thank you, Art. Where's the pear? Oh, right here. Uh, pears, once again, you do want to buy organic. It's one of those things you want to let ripen at room temperature. If you get uh, underripe pears and underripe avocados, I talk, like I talked about, and you put them in the fridge, that'll halt and severely uh, limit the uh, ripening process. So let them come to ripening stage at room temperature, then toss them in the fridge. That's important. And I think that is about it. It's almost everything from the grocery store. Definitely focusing on some summer stuff. Uh, but there you go. Uh, make sure you guys check out Thrive Market. They're such a great supporter of the channel. And I'm telling you, all your favorite stuff on Thrive Market is cheaper than the grocery store. You get that free gift when you sign up. The box comes to your door. It's 100% risk-free. I think you're going to love them. I've been using them for about five years right now. Uh, if you want to see more videos that cover produce items at the grocery store, leave a comment down below. But Art and I will see you soon. Until then, we leave you like we always do. Hashtag keep on cooking. Mad love and peace. Let's go play with the rose.